So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about CTF and BTF debug support in the GNU toolchain. Uh, yeah, so briefly, I want to first go. Sorry, I'll have to change the setup. I can't do it like this. Yeah. Maybe don't uh, don't listen to yourself. If someone wants to ask a question, then we'll raise the hand. How about that? So just to speak yeah. to the microphone and don't listen to the ear earphones. Yeah, I'll do that. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the CDF VDF debug format now. So basically, uh, in this talk today, first I want to briefly introduce the format, and uh, then give a brief update on what we have done over the last one year. Um, before I talk about implementation in GCC, and lastly, I want to spend some time today talking about our next phase for the project. So yeah, first things first, CDF and BTF debug formats are two distinct formats. They came into being to to fulfill the need of conveying um, minimal basic you know type information. So CTF stands for Compact C Type Format. It came into being in Solaris kernel and later was ported to Linux. The current version V3 is the V3 version of the Linux port. BTF stands for the BPF type format and um, it also came into being for the same need, the need being uh, to represent type information uh, for the kernel. The current version is V1. Now, both these formats have uh, have, a, have the same common ancestor. So if you look at the header files and such, you'll see remarkable similarities. You'll see similar looking steps representing types and similar looking set of kinds. But they, the fact of the matter remains that these are binary incompatible and distinct formats. They are currently being maintained in two different groups and follow a very different um, evolution history, so to speak. So going into differences will not be possible for me today, but I thought I'll give a flavor of how the two formats look like currently and how they are evolving, just to drive home the point that the two formats do remain quite different from each other. So let's see the um, most recent uh, edition that we have seen in CTF. In CTF, we've, we've seen the CTF case slices being added in, I think it was 2019, yeah. So before this, CTF did not have a way to represent enum bit views. And uh, so now we do. On the BTF side, these most recent additions have been in the last few months of 2021. Um, going to further representation related differences, um, CTF has a support for multiple compilation units. So it has a concept called archive, which is used to arrange um, the CTF section. The CTF, so think of what the compiler generates as a CTF dictionary. So archive gives you a way to represent these um, dictionaries in a, in a parent child relationship. So you can the linker uses this representation, the archive representation, after type deduplication, but archives may find a use case in other scenarios as well. And on the BTF side, there is no such representation. Probably it's not needed yet. Um, and then on the library side, you have a libctf, and this libctf fits in the utils as of 2.36 onwards, and this is used by both the linker and the debugger. And on the BTF side, there is a BTF side, sorry, there is no lib BTF, and there is no link of support needed yet either, it seems. And but there is a lib BTF which sits in the kernel, and it does um, it does BTF program loading and more. It has a wider responsibility than just dealing with BTF section, but understandably, it does let you open and inspect BTF section. So the needs are fulfilled, it's just that the library support sits a bit differently for the two formats. And the last one is probably uh, the most representative of what I want to convey in this slide, which is that BTF is evolving very close to what BPF programs need. So if you look at the, one of these um, extensions in BDF, which is BTF.exe, it's a new section. And it gives you information for CORE support in BPF programs. And um, so basically it needs source location information and some 
weird looking relocations, but all this to fulfill the needs of a specific use case of the BPF land, right? On CTF side, there is no such information that's needed to be represented. So CTF remains generic to this date, but BTF is uh, working with, BPF is very close to the fulfilling the needs of BPF programs. Uh, having said that, we have worked over the last one year to support BPF and CDF formats in the GNU tool chain. On the CDF side, now you have two uh, command line options, minus GCDF and minus GBDF to generate the CDF and BDF sections respectively. On the binutil side, for CDF, the support is also complete. The linker supports type deduplication and you can use object dump and other utilities. On the debugger side, GDB can use the CDF sections and offer users some useful you know, debugging information if Dwarf is not present. And the support for both uh, single CU, the single compilation unit and archives exists in GDB. So by and large, it looks like, well, by and large, yeah, the support seems to be ready. So yeah, try it out with your applications and report issues if you see any on the channels that we know. On the spec side, Nick has done most of the heavy lifting here and uploaded as well all the documents on cdfstd.org. So this has been set up for not only sharing information, but also um, getting some feedback from all of you via the mailing list as well. Right, so yeah, I wanted to spend some time on the implementation aspects in GCC. Uh, we got some feedback in the past few iterations of the Um, is it me or this is no, looks like we lost Indu. Oh, oh, okay, let's see. I'm going to give it a, a minute, see what happens. Do we have anyone else uh, from the team who might be able to uh, continue the presentation? Um, I could do my, I could try it, yeah. But it's better if she comes back. Yeah, <laughs> I think Indu might be back. Indu, are you back with us? I'm here. Sorry, I got disconnected. Am I, st uh, am I still audible? Yes. Okay. So I'll keep my camera off in case it, you know, helps the connection. Um, I hope, uh, yeah, so I'll start over from this slide. We have adapted the uh, implementation get after the feedback that we received from upstream that, um, yeah, do not use tree structures and do not use debug hooks because long-term, uh, yeah, so basically, yeah. Hello? It seems I'm here. So yes. at this time, yeah, so we haven't added any further debug hooks. What we rely on is the is the dwarf to debug hooks. What we have added is the, is the gray block on the right side that you see. Um, all that it does is it introduces new APIs and those APIs are called from some of the existing debug hooks in Dwarf to debug hooks. So the key takeaway, key takeaway from this slide that I wanted to uh, say was that the, the Dwarf generation remains unchanged. You can use minus G and minus G CDF together to generate Dwarf and CDF or Dwarf and BDF for any target. Um, well, for the targets that support those debug formats. And um, the second takeaway here is that, um, well, I can go over it in the next slide. So the gray block is what we will delve into in the next slide. Right. 
Right. So the, the main APIs here of concern are the draw to early finish and draw to finish. And uh, these are the two main APIs which are being used to um, generate CDF and BTF debug information. The APIs shown here in red are the ones that we have used in the debug hooks. And these are the APIs that we think are useful if you want to add a new debug format uh, to GCC. So the dwarf to CDF utility is the, is the one that takes the internal dwarf representation from GCC and converts it into an internal CDF representation. Um, the APIs here, CDF add function, add array, and add OE, struct or union are the ones that are used to update the CDF container. CDF container, think of CDF container as just, um, is just is just some is just the uh, entity that defines what the internal CDF type CDF representation looks like, and it also holds the run the CDF types at runtime for for you, right? And the emission is written in the CDF out C and BDF out uh, files, and at some point, yeah, you emit uh, CDF and BDF. So the emission is placed here in early finish or CDF debug finish, depending on whether it's CDF or BDF debug format. Um, CDF more for yeah i would just say that cdf is always emitted early for bdf we do have a choice to make and that's because of btf core core but i for this uh talk today let's skip over that part for now um yeah having said that so most of this infrastructure here is shared for btf and cdf generation so even for bdf you would do the same flow you would take the dies uh, so these are read-only dies for all of this gray engine. So you take in the dies and you create the internal representation of the CDF container. Now, because the two have a shared common ancestor, it is also possible to just, it is, it, by and large, it has been possible to convey, to represent those, um, even uh, the content necessary for BDF in the CDF container. The only difference that comes in for BDF generation is uh, somewhere here, right? Before emission, you do some piece pre-processing and also just after initialization, there is some pre-processing done. But um, yeah, that's it. That's all about the implementation in GCC. So far, uh, using the dwarf dive has worked quite well. Uh, there have been issues, but yeah, we'll, we'll look at them as time goes. Uh, for GDP, the GDP also uses libcdf um, to read CDF data and to present to user, um, you know, type information and such uh, if C if dwarf is not present. Recently, the support for archives was added, so now it supports both single compilation and CDF archives. And the next steps for GDP would be to add support for CDF v4. Um, then we have that, you know, more in a, a baked state, and also other format changes. Now, yeah, this brings me to talk about what we would like to get done next in this project. Yeah, we would like to continue to support CDF and BDF in the GNU tool chain, and um, the larger goal is to move towards CD towards CDF v4. So yeah, please hop on to cdfstd.org and um, many of the issues uh, will be will be open to talking uh, and getting some feedback on the mailing list there. Before I get into CDF v4 specifically, there are a few slides that I want to discuss. Um, this is something that I would like to spend time on. And uh, so this goes in the direction of what is next for this project, right? One of the things that has come into light is this um, interaction of debug flags, the existing debug flags, and GCDF and GBDF. So essentially, uh, in this specific case, now it relates to the debug in full level. But but understandably, the issue uh, what I what I need to see is um, whether the dwarf dies, the set of dwarf dies that are generated, they are optimal enough for CDF and BDF generation. So one of the cases that has come out is debug in full level. Basically, these two flags here, G-level and G-toggle, they update the debug info level, and so does GCDF, GBDF. 
So let's let's just look at the example to make it um, clear right away. G0, GCTF, G toggle. So the debug level hops from zero to two to zero. Now, when the the user when she said G0, GCTF, G toggle, she probably meant give me give me some dwarf, but don't give me CTF. But what ends up happening is no dwarf, no CTF. So I think you get the idea, but yeah. So the solution here seems to be that we need to differentiate between how much of dwarf we internally generate versus what does the user want to be emitted because now you have internal consumers of dwarf dyes. Um, yeah, any feedback or any challenges that you see here on this um, problem would be appreciated. Next, this is another item that um, I noted when we were upstreaming the, the patches. Um, in general, it did feel like if we modularize the dwarf to out functionality, it will be useful. One of the things that we were trying to get done then was just uh, we thought it would be useful to just add a dwarf to int h, which is the interface that say for uh, these um, debug formats, the interface that these debug formats might end up using. So base die, base uh, die type creation and uh, maybe some APIs for uh, getting and setting attributes. But another suggestion that was made in this regard was why don't you split off a dwarf to CFI.h? Now here, yeah, I need to probably get some feedback and also look further into it, research and see which line of um, split makes sense and has uh, is doable basically. Um, and finally, yeah, there are some low-hanging fruits in preparing for v4. So adding some um, GCTF version command line options and also making the making the container version aware. Uh, these are implementation specific next steps in GCC. And yeah, the same step drop, but let's talk about CTF v4. And uh, so there are some thing, there are some, uh, Areas we were, where we would like the CTF CTF format to be upgraded. Some of these are listed on the CTF STD website. Uh, we will make the information more clearly laid out over the next few weeks. But one of the items that has been sought after and also requested is the support for bad traces. So we would like to um, extend the CTF format to support backtraces with the following requirements. First, um, it should be, the backtraces should be available, uh, should support asynchronous back unbinding and have support so that the original value of the arguments can be recovered. And while, and do all this while keeping CDF principles in mind. So keep it simple and compact. So do not add complex expression encoding, no location list and no stack machine. And um, so one of the observations that has been made, none of this is fully baked, but it is, yeah, I would like, I'm, I'm discussing it first time um, uh, publicly, right? So one of the observations here is, um, around call side information. So each ABI defines uh, parameter passing rules. Uh, the so the first thing that it defines is given a high level language type, what is the machine type? And what, and the second thing that it defines is given the machine type, how do you assign or how do you do the argument marshalling? How do you assign the register and stack location and so on? So the thinking here is um, the debug format should be able to specify one and let the backtrace client deal with the number two. So, in other words, what I mean to say is that it should be sufficient to just encode the natural location of the argument in some sort of a class. And the client, the backtrace client, should be able to figure out the exact location from the position class of the argument and the ABI. So if you look at, so AMD64 lays out these APIs, these storage classes quite explicitly. Similarly, other APIs, for example, AR64 lays out these um, in as the storage classes. 
So to, to make it perhaps more clearer, um, I have some examples on the left side, which is say uh, for the first um, for the first example, that's a function with six arguments. And um, in AMD 64, you would see the arguments being passed in a specific order in a spec in these set of registers. Now, as far as the CDF uh, as far as the backtrace format goes, it should be sufficient to say that there are six arguments and each of storage classes, storage class integer, the backtrace client should be able to then infer that um, these must be registers and hence these are the locations that these are going to be passed in. Um, second example shows small aggregates. So uh, as AMD64 says anything less than 8, 8 bytes is a small aggregate and all of it will be passed via registers. So in this case, the two arguments are int A and struct form S. Um, the first argument is passed in RDI. The second argument has, um, it's a small aggregate. So the first two members of the struct are passed in the same register and SRD is passed in an XMM register. So as far as the format, the backtrace format goes, it should be sufficient to just say this, that the first argument is passed in an integer and the second argument uses two storage locations. Um, of those two storage locations, the first one is going to be integer. And for the second you know, member, I'm not going to say anything because it needs to fall back on the previous one. It's the shared location, integer. And the third goes to an SP register. So. The point that I think I'm trying to make is that if there is an unambiguous way to specify that information, then the backtrace client should be able to just do the marshalling easily. Uh, last example is also along the same lines, so but maybe we can skip it for now. Um, yeah, so basically we are trying to also go bottom up. We what we're trying to do is just. Um, do the minimal necessary cut, do the minimal necessary required uh, changes for now. So get the, let's define the CDF backtrace format phase one. Phase one being get the original value of the argument from its natural location if it has not been clobbered. So the compiler gives you this information of whether or not, whether or not it's clobbered and gives you the storage location and in, in, in the backtrace format and um, the client does the rest of the things. This may or may not be enough. This information may or may not be enough, but yeah, it would be good to see how many cases does it serve. So it's coming down to, to coming down to um, the following. We would need two CDF sections with the relevant information. The, CDF, the dot CDF section already exists. What we would need to do is add call site and call site parameter information and the unwinding information will go into a dot cdf frame section it will need to contain two specific indexes the call site index and the cfa index call site index being given a pc uh, i do want to go find out the call site um, record because that's where my um, storage classes and that information re uh, re lives the CFA index is the one that gives you uh, the information about unwinding. Given a PC, what's the CFA? So yeah, uh, uh, it, Linker will need to do the necessary work as well here. There might there will be some need to merge the CDF frame sections across multiple compilation units, and maybe some deduplication or garbage collection seems it might be necessary. Um, the the main um, yeah the key the key takeaway here would be that we are still relying that the client may be able to do the part of the heavy lifting a part of the heavy lifting here by following some ABI specific methods of uh, knowing the exact uh, register and storage location. So with that, I would like to end and say that you can reach us on any of these channels and I'm ready to take questions, if any. Thank you, Indu. Anyone would like to ask some questions? We have four minutes. <laughs> 